Well, the first video diary since back in the winter over at Bayswater, and I've been up to loads since then. I've been all over Europe. I've caught some absolute perlers. But before I get to that, I'm going to talk to you about what I'm doing today. I'm over at the quarry. It's a, a lake I fish a lot as a young lad, you know, from the age of 16 to 21. I fished here relentlessly, hundreds of nights. And you could say it's a place where I cut my teeth. I learned so, so much here. I'm over here with Gaz Hood from Trekker, and uh, we're fishing a couple of swims apart. He's in an old favourite swim of mine, the Pallets. You know, I caught herds of fish out of there back in the day and the same old spot that I used to catch them from is still there. It's much bigger these days where a lot of people are finding it and spotting out on a, on a wider sort of line and uh, he's managing to get three rods along that and he's, uh, he's had a couple of fish himself, a really nice common, I think mid 20 and I've had a couple myself as well. Just a minute ago, I lost a fish, and um, oh, come off. what happened is basically it's a really weedy lake, and the spots are at a premium. You know, you have to really work hard to find the clear areas and uh, concentrate your feed in the hole, mark your line, and really make sure that, that you are presented. You know, get that rig down to the bottom. And what I've done is I've, I've spotted on top of it, and obviously it's only four or five foot deep out there, and the coots have been relentlessly diving on it. and. Um, I think, you know, a couple of times it's registered on the alarms that I've been picked up and I've recast, but I think I've been picked up a few times without it registering. And what had happened, I got the old hair tangle, you know, the bait had swung around the shank. And if ever there's a recipe for a hook pull, that is that. So yeah, we're here at the quarry, loads of good fish, really good weather, and uh, I'm sure we're gonna catch some more. But what we're gonna talk to you about is, is the spots that we're fishing and the way that we're delivering the bait out there. You know, it's like I say, it's really important to, to find the clear spots get the bait in right on top of it, not throwing stick, you know, the opposite of that. If you're throwing stick in, you, you're anticipating fish coming in around the swim, working their way into the hook plates. This is all about a trap, you know, a hole in the weed, somewhere you can present your bait, get the feed on top of it, and that is the key to fishing really weedy lakes. I've already got the rod back in position after losing that fish and I think it's time to top the bait up. So what I'm going to do is going to get some more bait out there and then I'm going to show you the bait I've been using and the pure flow systems from Trekker. Right, just had a little top up, just a few spoms, trying to uh, freshen up the area, get a bit of interest. And now I'm going to talk to you about the Pure Flow systems. There's two in the range. First of all, we've got the bait filter, and that's the one for the, uh, the particles. Just helps drain off the water, less messy, makes spotting that much easier. But the new one is the air dry system. And what that enables me to do is to bring my boilies with me, um, or pre-dry them you know, from the freezer, get that initial frost off, and hang them in the tree, they dry off. But I like to combine the two. And the real, real edge here is to use your particle liquid. You know, I've got all the sugars from the tiger nuts, all the oil from the hemp, all of that goodness, all of that attraction is lost in that water. It will just, if I put it out there, it will just wash away. But with air dried boilies, all the moisture has come out of them. 
they're now like sponges and you can just use them to to suck up all of that liquid as i have here makes them softer as well and i actually believe the carp will eat them more readily more quicker because because they're easier to chew they're softer they're pumped full of goodness and uh, yeah it's a real edge that i like to incorporate in my baited mixes when it comes to, to actually spotting the bait out obviously i'm going to mix them you know but initially i'm soaking the boilies to get in that attraction put them in with my uh, particles mix it all up and then i've got my mix ready to go I imagine some of you might be thinking, why haven't I just put the boilies in with the particle and be done with it? Well, you never know how the session's gonna pan out. You know, I might see a fish top and I don't want to spawn on top of it. I might want to just cast out there and put a, cat, a catapult pouch full of boilies straight over the top, you know, and that, this allows me to do that. So I can fish just boilies or I can mix some in and I'm, I'm free to do it as and how I like, basically. Um, the th one of the things I want to try and get across, um, a little uh, technical tip as such, Quite often when I've used tiger nuts to do this, tiger nuts are one of my favourite baits to, to use the juice to rehydrate boilies. I think it's a massive edge, but sometimes they can be really, really gloopy. And um, I don't, when I think when it's really thick like that, the boilies aren't really sucking it on. And uh, what I do in that situation is to add a little bit of lake water, thin it down so it's, it's, it's gloopy, but not like, like wallpaper paste. And uh, the air dry baits take on that liquid much, much better. And I guarantee, if, uh, if you soak your boilies in tiger nut juice, you will see a, a vast improvement. Well, it's the morning after the night before as such, and uh, it hasn't quite gone to plan for myself. I've uh, unfortunately lost one, had the, um, had, forgot to turn the bite alarm on, you know, absolute schoolboy error. And uh, yeah, went out in the boat to try and uh, retrieve it and just brought back the end of my line. So uh, the moral of the story is there, check your, uh, check your alarm before you go to sleep and uh, a reminder of, of that for myself. Um, Gaz, on the other hand, down in the old pallet swim, he's uh, had a couple more, he's had, uh, another younger fish, but also one of the old school originals, you know, a fish, uh, I think they call it the Hoover these days, but back in the day when I fished here, there was two fish, one was called the Duke and one was called the Hoover, very similar fish. And uh, yeah, it's an absolute dinosaur of a carp and at over 30 pounds, I'm sure he's uh, absolutely over the moon with that. So uh, at the moment, nothing is really going on, but bearing in mind yesterday, we had a couple of um, late morning bites. We're gonna hang it out, you know, we're gonna, been a bit more time waiting you know I've repositioned the rods gotten back on the spots Gaz has done the same and uh, there is a chance of uh, another fish just yet so uh, yeah moving on from there I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I've been getting up to my diary as such and um, I have been fishing quite a lot but not in the UK you know as of um, I think it was March the last time that we spoke like I said and uh, from there I've really been concentrating on my foreign fishing as such and uh, I went to Holland there was a particular fish that I had in my mind, you know, I'd seen a picture of it on, um, on Instagram and uh, I'd, I'd, I'd done a little bit of research and heard some, some sort of, some news is in that it's, it's quite a catchable fish, so fa fairly fa friendly as such and comes out in um, May. So, you know, I booked two, two weeks off, I think that was three weeks I had, I had a three week session booked and I went to, um, to France first. I stopped off on um, the Abbey Lakes complex, I've been told that I could uh, fish one of the, the lakes that isn't normally fished. You know, it's on the site, they shoot round it. it. Supposedly had some big fish in there. So I went and done a week there, or not a week, I've done, I think I've done three or four nights over there. And I caught a, a monster 60 pound grassy and a couple of 20 pounders. But all in all, I didn't really see any really big carp in there or nothing that, that really shook me as such. So uh, with that in mind and, and trying to make the most of the time that I had, you know, I still had over two weeks left. I headed to um, Holland to fish for the one that they call the Black Mirror there, you know, a really, a really big fish, you know, a potential personal best for myself. And uh, when I arrived, 
I was, I was shocked at how small the lake is, not very big at all, maybe, I don't know, six, six acres tops, maybe five acres, that sort of size, fairly square, and, and basically like a, like a bomb hole, you know, ultra, ultra deep. Uh, I went in and looked in the boat, and as soon as you were sort of 10 metres off the bank, you know, it's just disappearing into the abyss, and uh, we're talking sort of 50-odd foot. And when you're, when you're fishing a lake like that in the spring, it's pretty obvious what's going to go, you know, you, you're going to have the upper layers warming up, fish coming into the edges. And that was uh, the approach that I was looking to, to, to use on there is bait around the edges using the boat because you're allowed to do that sort of in Holland, you know, it's all free and easy. You can, um, you can use a boat, you can place your rigs, do what you want. And with no other anglers there, I was going around each day just all the little marginal gravel bits where it looked like a fish might come or some reeds. I was just throwing a handful of tigers, a handful of crumbed up boilies and not, not feeding any spots as such heavily, just trying to introduce the bait around the whole lake because it was so small and uh, I'm only baiting around the edges. It was possible to do with just a handful here, a handful there. And after sort of, I think it was like three or four days in, when I was on one of these, these missions out in the boat to put the bait in, I, I saw a fish. It, it just came under the boat and, and scooted off and it was near to, to one of the spots I've been baiting, so I positioned a rig there, and very shortly afterwards I had my first fish from there, 29, 29 pound common, which was, uh, yeah, a nice start. But you think once you've caught one, you're gonna catch another one off the spot, you know, quite often that's the way in carp fishing, you find a spot where they're willing to feed and you get another one. But I didn't catch anything for, I can't remember how many days it was, it was eight or nine days, and uh, eight or nine days sitting still on your own is, is not much fun, you know, with nothing to go go on you know I saw there was a few other fishing lakes you're talking a, a lake like I say five acres with around 20 carp in and most of them are really small sort of stock fish and in the mornings I'd see these a couple of them repeatedly showing you know they'd be jumping out and I'd be casting yellow pop-ups pink pop-ups white pop-ups adjustable zigs and this thing was just absolutely had me, had me on the edge you know I just everything that I was I was trying was just getting rebuffed you know and, and nothing nothing would seemingly get a bite but during this period, the weather was cold, you know, northeasterlies, not, not productive spring weather as such. You know, I'm looking for fish in the edge in the boat, hoping to see them in, in the warmer temperatures, and the weather wasn't like that. Um, but on the, on the second from last day, the weather came good. You know, the sun came out, and I remember in the afternoon, I could feel the, I could feel the heat, and I knew when I went out in the boat that afternoon that I was probably going to see something. And, um, going along this reed bed and I'm just like looking around checking the spots looking and I heard the reeds as they're all dry they're all crispy from uh, like the dry dead ones from last year I could hear them all like knocking together and uh, this tiny little mirror shot off and he, he weren't very big you know definitely under 20 pounds sort of 15 pounds and as I've watched him scoot under the boat I've heard like an enormous eruption and uh, I'm only in a, a 1.8 meter boat and the boil up that come up around the boat was huge, you know, easily as big as a bivvy. And uh, uh, the noise it made, I just knew. I knew that I'd, I'd probably gone across that fish, but the momentum of the engine took me sort of 10, 15 metres out of the area as quickly as it happened. So I doubled back, looked at the position along the reeds where it happened. And when I came back sort of a minute, two minutes later, I saw, I saw the big black one, you know, three odd foot long. Just caught a glimpse of it as it disappeared down into the algae and uh, immediately I looked up near to, the, to the, the reeds where I was just off. Couldn't see the bottom there, it was a little bit too deep, but I, I positioned myself opposite the reeds and uh, I, could, I could obviously remember that spot, spot. So I went back to my swim, got a rod, and uh, came back to the exact spot, eight ounce grip, I bounced it along the bottom. And uh, once I got that crack down, I just lifted it up, checked the rig, there was no debris on it, bounced it twice more, got the drop, handful of tigers, handful of crumb boilies over the top, and that rod was in position. It was about, about 200 metres from where I had my bivvy, so I was well out of the way. And uh, the full moon come up that evening, and uh, I had a bit of a feeling, you know, I had a feeling that something might happen. And, and the following morning at first light, I remember waking up, seeing that the indicators hadn't moved. And, you know, I was a bit gutted, but it wasn't long after that, you know, it just absolutely shredded off. and. Immediately, I thought it was probably that fish. You know, the, the locals said to me that 70% of the bites are that fish, you know, and I'd already caught one. I'd then seen it, had this take, picked into it, jumped in the boat, met it out over really deep water, and it was just, yeah, I, I had a feeling, you know, and, you, and you, get, you do get that feeling sometimes. And yeah, when it came up, I don't mind admitting that the, the knee was quivering a bit as it went in the net, and 
yeah, what a monster. Luckily, I got uh, a couple of friends from Corda down to do some uh, video and some, and some pictures. And we weighed it 74 pounds. So yeah, new personal best for myself. And yeah, just, yeah, I'm still buzzing about it now. So since then, what have I been up to? I haven't, still haven't done much fishing in the UK. I've, done a, I've had a couple of trips to uh, Belgium on the canals. Um, Derek, one of the, the quarter sponsored guys in Holland, he's uh, always been offering me the chance to come fishing with him out in Belgium. So uh, went there a couple of times. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite an eye-opening experience. You know, they're so vast, these waterways. and you try, try, trying to apply the sort of the, the hunt, the hunt, the, the seek and destroy sort of tactics, you know, looking for them. But there's so much water, and whenever you set up, you feel like you're only looking at such a, a small proportion of it. And uh, I don't mind admitting that on, on the V Canal and the Albert Canal, it all felt, I don't know, it's like sea fishing, and I felt just as confident casting off a couple of grippers off South End Pier with a bit of herring on the end as catching a big carp, you know, it was all a bit much. But he took us to a, a smaller canal. Uh, one a lot more intimate, shorter sections, clearer water, less boats, and yeah, it was a, a little bit more like normal carp fishing as I know it. And uh, caught a couple of fish from there, nothing big, you know. One, one was a, a double, I think, and one was uh, just over 30. And, and Derek had a, a nice one as well. I think he had the biggest one in, in one of the sections we fished at 49 pounds. And then from there, we went and fished on the V Canal, and the V Canal is the the most prestigious canal in that area. It's where the, a lot of what you would call the the trophy history fish uh, have been caught over the years and to say I got lucky is uh, an understatement you know Derek's been fishing these canals for a very very long time and he's caught some amazing amazing fish from there like one one fish a common of 36 kilos um, which is an 80 pounder you know and um, he's also had another 30 kilo common that I think he was the first one to ever catch so yeah it was a, it was a buzz to fish there but he was always he would, he'd mentioned this fish called the mocha which is um, one of the biggest mirrors in there if not the biggest one and um, we saw a few fish topping put the rods out to where these fish had been topping and we caught some stock fish you know some some really young little ones you know upper doubles 20 pounders and then finally my my last bite I've picked into it, it was oh hang on a minute this one's a bit more serious and as it's coming close it it just got bigger and bigger from one minute I'm thinking I've got a 40 pounder on the end and, and the next says it's under the rod tip or that might be a 50 pounder and then when you lift it out of the water it was oh my god it might be a 60 pounder it was um it was a little bit down in weight at 59 14 but it was that fish the mocha the mirror and um yeah absolutely to catch a fish like that on a on a, on a one-off session on, on that canal that's so vast um yeah mind-blowing so yeah that's what I've been up to that's what I've been doing it's still like I say couple of hours left. We had late, late morning bites yesterday, so still every chance that we might get another one. So we're gonna hang it out and uh, I'll uh, come back to you with an ending as and when. Well, no more fish, unfortunately. I don't know why, it looks good, you know, a few fish still topping, but we can't complain. We've caught some lovely fish. Gaz managing original, you know, a fish that I've caught myself, so it's great to see it's still there, probably 40 odd years old, still swimming around, still making people happy. And uh, it's good to see the place, you know. Even though I've only caught a couple of 20s this time, it's good just to be here, you know. It's a, a long time since I fished here properly, and uh, it's a special water that I hold close to my heart. And uh, yeah, it's good to see how it's matured, and I look forward to coming back in the future.